tumultuous scenes on a field in eastern Germany. Opponents of genetically modified food want to storm a field and destroy the GM maize being grown on it. The police intervene. The demonstrators are trying to make a statement. They want the dangers of genetic engineering to become known to the public, they say. The police take 64 activists into temporary custody. For years, opponents and advocates have been fighting each other with ever-increasing hostility. But why? What is the background behind this conflict? We want to answer one question. Is genetic engineering really dangerous? Step one, the advertising videos of the manufacturers. They claim genetic engineering produces higher yields, fights world hunger, and reduces the need for pesticides. But what actually is a genetically modified plant? Most plants are genetically modified in such a way as to make them capable of withstanding a large dose of herbicides. While the weeds on the field die, the genetically modified plant won't. Next, we do some internet research. We find more than half a million critical entries on the subject of risks. A frequent point of criticism, allergy dangers. Experts argue about whether sufficient testing on such risks has been done. Another discovery we made on the internet is this article by a Japanese professor. He criticizes the license papers of genetically modified soybeans. He found misinterpretations, false conclusions, and disregarded data. Serious accusations. A scientist from Caen in northern France mentions a further point. The animal tests done on the harmlessness of these genetically modified foods were inadequate. We want to get to the bottom of these three issues, allergy dangers, licensing procedures, and here at the University of Caen, the quality of the animal feeding studies. The manufacturers of genetically modified foods want to prove the harmlessness of their products by feeding them to animals and obtaining good results. Professor Gilles Eric Saralini, on the other hand, thinks these tests have been designed in a way that suggests they are meant to hide something. Their statistics are meaningless and they never should have been accepted. True results like this one are concealed through inadequate statistics. Already in 90 days, there are toxicological problems with the rats eating that. And uh, that means for consumer that they can have kidney and liver problems. We would like to hear a reply to this argument from the world's largest producer of genetically modified food, Monsanto. They were the ones who did the tests but our request for an interview was categorically refused. The next destination on our research trip is Japan. It's a huge market for the genetic engineering industry. Monsanto pushed its way onto the market with genetically modified soy during the mid-90s. Every Japanese person eats soy and Monsanto wants a piece of the pie. And this even though resistance in Japan to genetically modified food is especially high. The avalanche set off by environmental activist Makiko Irasawa was grist to the mill for the opponents of this technology. I thought it was so strange. I thought, I'm the consumer. I should be the one to decide whether or not I want to eat genetically engineered foods. But I wasn't able to do that with genetically modified soy. Ms. Irazawa wanted to know what she was actually eating. She went to the Department of Health and to her surprise she was allowed to look at the licensing papers for Monsanto's GM soy. This is not allowed elsewhere. The folders are kept in a simple metal cabinet. The unaltered originals mustn't be taken away or photocopied. They have to be copied out by hand. And that's just what Ms. Irasawa did. She and almost a hundred helpers copied out nearly a thousand pages. They noticed that there were serious discrepancies between the Japanese and the American versions. 
The Japanese one contained no reference, for example, to the weight changes experienced by the lab animals. What do such weight changes tell us? Makiko Irasawa isn't an expert, so she looked for someone who could scientifically evaluate the papers. She went to Mashaharu Kawata, assistant professor of microbiology at the University of Nagoya. The same Professor Kawata whose internet texts had come to our attention. Professor Kawata promised us three examples to illustrate his criticism of Monsanto's soybeans. Here we have the papers for the genetically modified soy. And right away we have the first problem. The artificially introduced gene, a protein, was not examined in the plant itself. Monsanto had this protein rebuilt by a bacterium in the laboratory. That is cheaper for Monsanto, but from a scientific point of view, the plant itself has to be examined. Because the protein in the soy and in the bacterium are not necessarily identical, thus this method cannot be used to exclude any health risks. And a second point of criticism, Monsanto only investigated a small fraction of the protein. Only the first 15 amino acids of the 455 the protein consists of were examined. The manufacturer cannot exclude allergy risks or even toxicities. I think it is likely Monsanto wanted to hide possible changes and thus possible dangers. This test here is very important. Soy is cooked because only cooked soy is palatable. If this cooking test fails, people's health is at risk. Monsanto conducted the following standard test. Boil once at 100 degrees for 10 minutes. Now the harmful proteins should be destroyed. But they weren't. What did they do then? They just repeated the test, again for 10 minutes at 100 degrees. The protein still wasn't destroyed. Then they boiled the genetically modified soy for a whole 25 minutes, this time at 220 degrees. That's what the papers say. The problem is obvious. No one preparing soy in the home cooks it at 220 degrees, and for half an hour at that, genetically modified soy should not have been approved. It is probable that the genetic modification made the protein more stable. It just isn't destroyed. For me, this failed cooking test, it says here in the papers how they did it, has a direct connection to the increased number of allergies. Monsanto's conclusion that genetically modified soy is safe is wrong, probably even criminal. A serious allegation by the professor. What does Monsanto say about this? They continue to deny our request for an interview. We looked for more information, but there are no data. A connection between genetically modified soy and allergies can neither be confirmed nor repudiated. What about the authorities? They didn't object to the documents. Clearly, they have completely different